hey hello and welcome once again to my youtube channel this reflex in this video i'm going to be showing you how to manipulate this studio background uh from what we have here to this bringing in overlays blending everything all together color grading and stuff if this is your first time visiting don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and also turn on the notification icon if you want more video on this about manipulation from a to scratch just go to my youtube channel the name is reflex image you can actually see a lot of videos there for you to learn for manipulations smudge painting and stuff uh this picture i'm using right now is given to me by pixelora photography you can actually check out his instagram and as you can see this is the picture i'm making use of over here he gave me the picture to work on thanks a lot i really appreciate for that so we are going to be manipulating this picture from what you have over here as you can see we are going to transform it to something like this so with no further ado let's jump into that firstly as you know my rule the thing we need to do right now is background remover first thing first background remover and also i don't like working on my background layer so let's go into where we want to work so this is the picture i'll be making use of over here i've already removed the picture from the background uh the process is easy but it's going to bore you guys out so i don't want to waste time on that so that's why i just did it this way so i already removed my model from the background so i don't want to waste so much of your time because i know almost everyone knows how, how to do that but if you don't know how to remove background perfectly when it comes to photo manipulation there's a video on that for you to learn how to do that i'll drop the link also in the description for you to watch that there how to remove background perfectly from a uh, picture also there's a video on how to extend the background also but i'll be also be repeating this step for you guys to work on so this is the background i'll be making use of right now this where the background this this this, this is the length of the background before so i just want to extend the background so how i achieved this i just went to my crop then i extend from the edge so this is the red line that is showing that means there's nothing there before so i want to fill everything up with this background color so let's jump into that so for me to do that firstly i want to remove all this all the white area here so i want to fill them with this satin background so how am i going to do that firstly i'll be using my lagzo too so watch how i do this so i will select round my model select round select it this way i'll select round i'll select round I'll make sure it's not touching the outfit. I'll select round. Okay. So what I'll do now, just invert the selection now by clicking on Ctrl Shift and I. Uh, if you want to do any work, please duplicate your background layer. So just drag it to the background over here to duplicate it first before you start doing anything. So this time around now, I'll just right click on it. I'll click on Fill. Then click on Content Aware. Content Aware. Then click on OK. So automatically it's going to fill this side for us but it might not be perfect so we have to work on that later on so let's wait for it to load for it to fill in the colors for us So boom automatically let's see let's see it fills everything for us country d it even exceeded my expectation it did something nice for us, but you see having some issues there at the floor it's uh the clothes spread there so we don't need that so we are going to clean that up how are we going to do that let me just zoom in let's zoom in this time around let's use our patch tool to amend this as this side so i'll just go to my patch this is my patch tool over here click on it then I'll cycle, I want to be doing it little by little, so I'll cycle over this area, then I'll drag it to the area I want it to fill in. As you can see, Ctrl D, look at what it did for us. It did a nice job for us. So I'll do the same thing here also. Cycle it, I'll drag it. So let's do the last one also. So let's trim over it. Let's trim over it. Drag. As you can see, it did something perfect for us. Almost perfect, but we still have some uh the background is not that smooth so we are going to amend that so for how to do that how are we going to do that right now 
So first, let me sample the background color. If you want to sample color, go to the color. Automatically, once you move away from the uh, color palette over panel over here, once you come, it's going to change your brush to color picker for you. So you pick any color you want to sample. So let me sample from here. Okay, let me sample from here. So I'll click on my OK. So this time around, I'll go to my adjustment layer over here. Then I'll go to gradients. I'll click on my gradients. As you can see, linear. But the scale, let me put the scale for like 167. Okay, let me make it 200. Okay, my scale at 200, as you can see, it's perfect. But the issue I'm still having is that it has already, it, it almost kills all the background for me. The background is no longer showing perfectly the way I want it to. So we just have to reduce the opacity. Let's bring the opacity down. As you can see. It's still okay this way. You can leave it this way, but you can just do some adjustments by clicking on the layer marks you have over here. Make sure your color is on black, your brush color is on black. Click on your brush, enlarge it, brush strength, put it at 20%. Then the area you know the shadow is located, just scroll over there to remove to remove the gradient there, as you can see. So we are going to we are getting our shadows back. Because the shadow will make our picture look very very realistic. So we're done with that, but I'm still having some dark spot over here which I don't like. So we still need to be filling every every color. Yeah, I can actually just create an empty layer on top of the layer I'm working on. Then pick up my brush. I'll still leave that 20% opacity. Then I'll scroll over that area as you can see. We have a perfect color. So let me turn it off and on. As you can see, we've done something perfect so far. So that's the first aspect, smoothing the background. Uh, making sure the shadow shows up and stuff so this the next step is bringing in the background and applying the overlays there to make them lap to make it look realistic that's the major aspect when it comes to manipulation if your background is not standing where all the objects you're bringing in is not perfectly placed on the background it won't look realistic so it's going to look more artificial and that's not what we want we want a background manipulation that will look perfect for our picture so if you want me to work on a picture for you, I'm also a freelancer, I'll drop my freelancing link down below. You can contact me there and I'll work on your picture for you at an affordable rate. And also if you're interested in getting all my packs, my retouching pack, my collaborating pack, and including my overlays, the files are also available for you to get. They are very, very affordable. You can go to my store and get them there or you can contact me via my WhatsApp and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So now let me go to my farm manager where the file is located and bring in my overlays. So I'll be making use of these four overlays right now. I'm making of these four overlays, but this will be the main background. So I'll just bring in my background into Photoshop. I'll bring it in. So I'll place it where I want it to be. As you can see, I want the picture to lap. I want our let our let to be shown to be on the mat. So that's what I'm trying to do, so that it look realistic, not as if she's standing on air. So you can as well leave it this way, but if you have to leave your overlay this way, it won't look realistic. So let's zoom in and see what I'm talking about. The shadow is no longer showing, so it's still looking a little bit like we brought it in. So we want it to blend in together with the background, to blend in, to make it look very, very real. So we change the blend mode now from normal, we change it to soft light. As you can see, it's blended it perfectly. And also look at the shadows. Look at the shadow we left. The shadow is there perfectly. But I think the red is too much on the background. So I'm going to be reducing the saturation for now. So I'll just control U on it. Then reduce the red, bring the red down, as you can see. So as you can see, it's blended in perfectly the way we want it to be. So we can just reduce the opacity a little bit if the overlay is showing a little bit too much. Just reduce the opacity. Bring it down, bring it down. So the next thing I'll be doing now, I'll be importing two frames. But one of the frames, I'll be making sure a picture is on one of the frames there. Because I have like three of our pictures over here. I have three of our pictures over here. So I will be making use of this one as a frame. So for me to do that, let me bring in the other overlay I'm talking about. So I'll be using this other overlay, but I'll be putting a picture at the middle instead of this flower there. So I'll just drag it to Photoshop. So I'll make sure it's, an, it's I'll open as a new document, as you can see. 
I'll open it as a new document. So I'll select the area I want the picture to be. I'll select, I'll use my rectangle marker tool which I have over here. So I'll select the area. Yes, the area I want it to be. So once I'm done with my selection, I just have to click on Ctrl J. So this is the layer I just created right now. So that's where I'm going to be putting the picture. So I'll just go to my file manager again. Then I'll pick the picture. I'll drag it to my Photoshop. So I'll wait for it to load. Oh, it's a raw picture. So let me just click on OK. So I'll wait for the picture to open you can see so let me just let me let me size it to I see if it I want to size it as a, as a portrait picture so what I'll just need to do now just right click on it create a clipping a clipping marks as you can see then I'll adjust it to I see if it so I'll merge everything together control shift and E as you can see I'll just have to drag it to the picture I'm working on right now so I'll just drag it you can see so everything is just show just click on ok ctrl t to transform it free transform to then reduce the size to a frame size then place it anywhere you want to place it i'll be placing it here still have to change the blend mode from normal to soft light as you can see if it's too much just reduce the opacity a little bit reduce the opacity so the next thing I'll bring in the other overlay, the other frame also. This time I this one I'm not putting anything inside, I'm just dropping it. I'm dropping it there. So I'll drag it into Photoshop. Just have to reduce the size. Reduce it. Okay. Then I'll still change change the blend mode from normal to soft light also. Soft light. So I'll reduce the opacity a little bit also. So the last object, second to the last object we'll be bringing in, which is the flower vase and the flower. So I'll just go to back to my file manager. i also click on it, I'll drag it in. So I'll bring it into Photoshop. Then I'll reduce the size to I see fit. Then I'll drag it to the location I want it to be. Okay, I want it to be around there. Okay. But the way you're seeing the flower right now, the color is a little bit too white. And also, I want it to blend in with the background we just created. So, for you to make it blend in, you just have to do just a single thing. Just reduce the opacity, reduce it, so that the color of the background will show a little bit on the flower. So, let me leave it at 80, as you can see, which is okay so far. So, we're done with that. The next thing we need to do now is to start our color grading. So, I'll be using my lot. I'll be dropping one of the lot for you guys to make it, two of the lot for you guys to make use of. Uh, the one I use for the skin tone is part of the pack I want to sell. So I'll be dropping the other ones for you guys to download and also this new effect I'll be using for you guys to download and use to practice on your own free time. So let me color grade the background first. I want to darken the background a little bit. So I have to click on the background. This, this is where we imported the background into Photoshop. I'll just go to my adjustments layer, click on color lookup, then I'll click on my chocolate color can see it's stacking the background for us but it's a little bit too much I'll just reduce the opacity reduce the opacity a little bit so I want to darken both the background and my model together also at the same time so I'll make sure what I'm working on right now is on my model is my model here I'll make sure it's on it so I'll still go back to my adjustment layer click on color lookup this time around I'll be picking my Andura standard which is the one I use for mostly for my shadows for creating shadows in my picture so I'll just click on it as you can see give us a low light image automatically a low light image which is very very perfect so all I just need to do now is just to reduce the opacity reduce it if it's too much I'll reduce the opacity so that's what that this time around I just want to change a little bit of the skin tone I don't like the way the skin tone is so that I can actually leave it this way I can decide to spice it up a little bit. So for me to do that, I'll make sure I click on my model. Then I'll go to my adjustment layout again. I'll click on color lookup. The color I love using for my skin tone is called natural color. So I'll just go there. I'll click on my natural color. As you can see, it gave us a nice skin tone, but it affects everything. But we want it to affect our model alone. So I'll just right click on it. I'll create a clipping max. So it's only going to affect my model, but it's not only affecting my model also, it 
it's also affecting our outfit also i only want it to be on our skin so the selection i have over here this is my layer marks i will change it to black by clicking on ctrl i so as you can see it has killed the color for us then i'll go and pick my brush my normal brush change the color to white then i'll apply make sure my brush opacity is at 100 percent and I'll apply the color where i want it to be so i'll zoom in so i can do a perfect job with that so i'll just apply it to the area i want it to be which is just the skin alone as you can see right now the way i'm doing it as you can see so i'm really going to apply it to it anywhere that look like the skin i know the color has to look like the skin so that's where we're applying it on so i will apply it on the hand also apply it on the hand and also the leg also so the leg so the opacity the, the bright the color is a little bit too much so i'll just have to reduce the opacity a little bit just bring down the opacity okay i think 40 is okay for me as you can see we've done something perfect so far so the last aspect is for me to create a snoot effect so i've already drew the snoot effects if you want to learn how i do my snoot effect there's a whole video on that also for you to learn how to do smooth uh, snoot effects from scratch using your photoshop very very easy to do but i've already created a window frame for you guys i will send it to you guys for you guys to make use of while working on your own uh, picture so i'm going to bring in the snoot effects now then apply it on the picture so this time around i'll go to my file manager where this note effect is located so i'll just go there so this is the window frame this is the one i'll be making use of so i'll just have to import it into my photoshop so i'll drag it into photoshop place it down then i'll adjust the area i want it to be how i want it to be so i think i want it this way so i'll click on my ok but as you can see it's already on my model but i only want this notify to be at the background so i'll drag it below my model this is my model over here this is my model layer over here so I, i'm dragging it below so what i just have to do now just control click on what i just brought in i'll control click on this as you can see it selects the it selects the uh window frame i just brought in right now so i'll just go back i'll just go to my adjustments layer over here then i'll click on curves so once I click on cover, as you can see, the selection has automat automatically deleted, delete. So I'll delete the window frame. This is the window frame below the cover adjustment I just created right now. So I'll go there and delete it. So I'll go back to my curve layer again. This time around, I'm going to increase my curve. As you can see, TIC fit. Okay, I'll click on my OK. But the edges are looking all that sharp. And that's not what we need. So I'll just click this. Just make sure you are clicking on the layer marks. Then you go to your filter. Make sure you're clicking on the layer marks. Then go to your filter. Go to blender block. Click on Gaussian blow. So you can actually, as you can see, this, I'm using 15. So if I'm to reduce it to zero, this is how it looks like. So keep on adjusting your blow till you see fit. Till you get the perfect result. So this, this what you want to achieve. I think we did it perfectly fine. So if you want to make the image a little light image you want to darken it a little bit so go to the uppermost layer this is the last layer so i'll just click on it i'll just go to my curve adjustment layer over here i'll go to my adjustment layer over here then i'll click on selective color under my black i'm going to increase my black as you can see it's darken the image make it look a little bit of low light so now let's check in let's check our before and after let's see our before and after results Control shift let's hold everything down or you can actually create a image of everything you just created so far by clicking on ctrl ctrl or shift and e as you can see we've created an image of that so let's group everything below let's group it together and let's put it in the same group let's group it together ctrl g so i will be turning off this layer right now so let's check out our before and after Here's that before and here's that after, uh, after. So we've done something nice so far. So that's all for today's tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also turn on the notification icon. If you have any question, you can contact me. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you want me to work on your pictures for you, there's a link below. You can kindly order me there and I'll work on your picture for you perfectly. 
And also, if you're interested in getting my files, you can actually visit my store and get it there. There are a lot of files for you guys to download there. Or you can message me via WhatsApp and I'll give you a payment method for you to get the files. So, thanks for watching, guys. See you guys on my next.